scientists have discovered an Earth-like planet that's not too far away, at least in cosmic terms. It's the closest planet to our solar system and the most important discovery in more than 20 years, as it could be able to sustain life. An amazing discovery by NASA to tell you about. The space agency says it has found what it's calling Earth's cousin, the most similar planet to our own they've ever found. From UFOs to possible alien abductions, we're fascinated by the idea of extraterrestrial life. Now, scientists have found the strongest evidence yet that a planet 124 light years away could be home to life. Researchers detected molecules in the atmosphere on the K218b, which on Earth are produced by marine organisms. This is K218b, an exoplanet eight times as massive as Earth, orbiting a red dwarf star about 20 light years from Earth. Discovered in 2015 by the Kepler Space Telescope, the planet has since stood out as a subject of keen interest amongst astrobiologists because it lies in the habitable zone of its star. And B, it could be a water world. As such, it was quite obvious that once the James Webb Telescope was launched, one of its objectives would be to turn its gaze towards the planet to look for signs of life. And in 2023, K21T made headlines when researchers reported that JWST observations of the planet were consistent with a habitable ocean world. To make matters more interesting, the same research team reported weak evidence for dimethyl sulfide, a compound that on Earth forms almost exclusively due to life. The excitement surrounding K218b began to wane a few weeks after Webb's report, as many scientists remained skeptical of the theory that Webb may have uncovered hints of life. They argued that even if K218b has a hydrogen atmosphere and a surface ocean of water, these factors alone wouldn't confirm the presence of life, but merely suggest the planet could be potentially habitable. And while the telescope did detect CO2 and methane on the planet, these gases are regularly produced by non-living processes. For example, NASA's Curiosity rover has detected methane on Mars seeping from the surface of Gale Crater, but scientists haven't found convincing signs of current or ancient life on the red planet. While CO2 and methane together in the atmosphere of K218b can easily be explained without life. Another compound that was possibly detected, dimethyl sulfide, is only known to be produced by life on Earth. So, could this mean that the planet harbors some sort of life similar to that of Earth, or any life at all? Well, firstly, the detection of DMS on K218b is far from confirmed and is influenced by how the data is analyzed. Depending on the analysis method, the James Webb data offers either a faint hint of dimethyl sulfide or no evidence of it at all, leaving the detection highly uncertain. The signal strongly overlaps with methane, and picking out DMS from methane is beyond the NIRISPEC instrument's capability. To find DMS, Webb would need to use an instrument better equipped to detect infrared wavelengths in the atmosphere. Fortunately, the telescope has one such instrument called the Mid-Infrared Instrument, or MIR, and it is using it to reveal whether DMS definitely exists on K2118b. But finding DMS doesn't mean we have found alien life. Some scientists believe that there could theoretically be non-living ways that produce the compound on other planets. In a new study led by the University of Cambridge, scientists used the James Webb's Emitter Fred instrument to examine the atmosphere of K218b and detected traces of two sulfur-based molecules called dimethyl sulfide and dimethyl dulfide. These compounds are known to be produced by microscopic life forms such as phytoplankton on Earth. Previously, in 2023, the planet's atmosphere was observed using James Webb's infrared instruments as it passed in front of its star, and the research team reported possible traces of DMS in the planet's atmosphere. The detection of such gases on Earth would represent a powerful biosignature, even if DMS can be produced by a known natural non-living mechanism. Scientists do not yet know of such a process. 
The discovery of this gas on a planet in a habitable zone of its host star, which may have oceans of liquid water, has raised hopes for a potential planet for life. Although the head of the University of Cambridge research team did not officially confirm the habitability of K218b in their report, they called the findings the most promising evidence for extraterrestrial life and painted a picture of an ocean planet that could be teeming with life. Therefore, the detection may be some combination of these sulfur-containing compounds. If it's DMDS, the biological interpretation may shift slightly. This molecule can also be produced by life on Earth, as some plants and microbes emit it, but it can also arise abiotically through photochemistry involving other sulfur species. Current data does not allow for a clear distinction Perhaps most importantly, we must consider abiotic explanations for dimethyl sulfide, which could indeed exist on an exoplanet. Laboratory experiments and modeling have shown that certain chemical processes can generate dumbass abiotically. For example, researchers have demonstrated that organic compounds exposed to high-energy radiation conditions resembling a primitive atmosphere or cometary environment can form small organosulfur molecules. Remarkably, in 2024, a team from the University of Bern, Switzerland discovered Dames in the coma of comet 67P Shiramov Gerasia Menko, which the European Space Agency's Rosetta spacecraft had been chasing for two years, collecting direct samples from the dust and gas cloud released by the icy rock. Comets are lifeless, icy bodies, yet dimethyl sulfide was identified as part of their chemical emissions. This proves the compound is not exclusively biological. Furthermore, the complexity of stellar activity must be acknowledged. Star flares. The host star of K218b is an active red dwarf prone to flares and spots. Stellar flares can create ultraviolet radiation that alters atmospheric chemistry, potentially quickly breaking down molecules like methane or DMS, or conversely generating false signals of other molecules. Star spots, cooler and dimmer regions on a star's surface, can cause anomalies in transit spectrometry. If the planet crosses over a spotted region of the star, the spectrum of starlight can change in a way completely unrelated to the planet's atmosphere, leading to false detections. Analysis of James Webb data tries to account for these effects, but it's not straightforward. Until we obtain more transit observations and ideally confirmations from entirely different instruments or telescopes, the result remains tentative. The next few years of research will determine whether this whisper becomes a clear signal of life or it fades away as an intriguing anomaly. In the meantime, understanding the star K218 itself its flare frequency, spectrum, age is all critical for context since the star significantly influences the planet's habitability and how we interpret data about it. For now, scientists are sifting through data and planning new observations to confirm the atmosphere's composition, while also looking ahead to the next generation of telescopes that will allow us to study this world and others like it in greater depth. Future Telescopes in the coming decades, even more powerful observatories are planned, which could turn this preliminary conclusion into concrete confirmation, or even discover entirely new biosignatures. In particular, scientists are developing missions like the LUVAR and the HABEX, both of which are conceptual flagship space telescopes proposed by NASA for the period beyond 2035. These future telescopes will surpass even the JWST in capability. For example, Louvre envisions a telescope with a primary mirror up to 16 yards in diameter. For comparison, the James Webb currently has seven yards with such a vast light collecting area and advanced instruments, Louvarar will be able to directly image exoplanets and obtain extremely detailed spectra. Hecbex is similarly designed as a specialized planet hunting observatory equipped with a star shade that's a large occulting screen that will fly in formation tens of thousands of miles ahead of the telescope to block out starlight that would allow the faint glow of nearby planets to be seen. 
Both concepts share a common goal, to find and study Earth-sized, potentially habitable planets around sunlight and smaller stars, and to examine their atmospheres for signs of life. What could such telescopes do? For K218 they, and similar worlds, first they could perform more sensitive transit spectroscopy, with mirrors many times larger than that of JWST, a LUVOR-type telescope could gather far more photons from each transit of an exoplanet, significantly improving the signal-to-noise ratio of the spectrum. If JWST brings us to the threshold of detection, LUVOR could confidently confirm the presence of DMS or rule it out with certainty. Furthermore, a mission could cover a broader range of wavelengths extending into the ultraviolet and deeper into the infrared, which JWST cannot reach. This would allow detection of other potential biosignatures or atmospheric indicators. For example, LUVAR could search for substances like ozone in the ultraviolet or detect organic haze or other compounds at shorter wavelengths. Importantly, future telescopes won't be limited to transits. They may be capable of direct imaging of some exoplanets. Currently, K2118b orbits very close to a relatively dim star, which makes direct imaging challenging. Capturing its light separately from the stars may prove impossible, even with a 16-yard mirror. However, the direct observation of thermal emission might be possible. A large infrared telescope could detect the glow from the planet's day side as it passes behind its star, offering another way to measure atmospheric composition and even map temperatures. In addition to LUVOR and ABEX, other missions will also contribute. ESA's aerial mission, scheduled for launch in 2029, will study the atmospheres of hundreds of exoplanets, including candidates like k 28 d though in shorter wavelengths and with lower sensitivity than the James Webb. Nevertheless, Ariel will be able to refine measurements of known gases on k 28 d and detect any fluctuations. Overall, the next generation of telescopes, uh, both in space and on Earth, will provide sharper focus and broader vision. Importantly, these missions won't view K2018b in isolation. They'll study a wide range of exoplanets in similar size and temperature. If, for instance, DMS is found on several Hycean-like planets, it would strengthen the idea that something universal, possibly biological, is happening. If the compound is detected only here and nowhere else, it could mean that K2018b is unique, or it could mean that the initial finding was simply a fluke. In any case, this world has become a benchmark for future exoplanet science. Conclusion this saga highlights a turning point in our search for extraterrestrial life. For decades, the prevailing mantra was to find the next Earth, a twin of our world with a similar size, orbit, and star type. K2018b is not like Earth in the traditional sense. It's much larger, likely has no land, and orbits a very different kind of star. In doing so, it has broadened the range of worlds that astrobiologists consider promising. Essentially, this distant world's greatest contribution so far is expanding the range of questions we ask about life in the universe. It has shown that our search cannot be one-dimensional. We have to cast a wide net from rocky planets around sun-like stars to mini Neptunes around red dwarfs from biosignatures like oxygen and ozone to more exotic substances. Imagine a century or more from now, an interstellar probe launched from Earth, equipped with advanced artificial intelligence and instruments, embarking on a long journey to this distant world. As it nears the K218 system, the probe's cameras capture a blue orb, lit up by the ruddy light of a dwarf star. Confirming the suspicions of our telescopes, it sees a planet wrapped in thick clouds with a vast ocean beneath them. Upon arrival, the probe may descend through the dense atmosphere, parachuting down through a sky painted peach, 
by the red star's light filtering through a hydrogen haze. It passes through cloud layers directly sampling their composition. Fierce winds far stronger than Earth's may batter the capsule but eventually, it reaches a vast alien ocean, stretching to the horizon in every direction, dark and endless. Overhead the local star glows dimly, a smoldering red ember, half the size of our sun, casting a copper gleam across the wave crests. As the robotic explorer sinks into the water, it finds a microbe from this alien ocean, confirming that we are not alone. Yet such a mission is far beyond our current capabilities. The distance of 24 light years is staggeringly vast with today's propulsion systems. And for now, we remain distant observers, decoding faint spectra and refining our theories transit by transit, spectrum by spectrum, we're drawing closer to understanding this world, and until we can send a distant probe, our vigilant telescopes will continue to listen to its whisper that when life speaks, even from a faraway ocean world, we will hear it.